economists were expecting a decline. Kenny Kosolda, Fox News. The first day of school in Seattle. Teachers in Seattle have been on strike since last week, demanding better classroom support, more special ed teachers, and increased pay. They reached a deal with the district, and Tuesday, the teachers voted to end their strike. Union Rep Jennifer Matter of the Seattle Education Association. We're able to increase our mental health professional support. We have more nursing. We're able to improve um, some of the special education ratios. More details about the tentative deal will be released when it's formally ratified by union members. The strike's been impacting about 49,000 school kids. Jill Nato, Fox News. Los Angeles Dodgers are back in the Major League Baseball postseason again. Line drive caught, and that's it. The Dodgers steamroll their way to another division title. Back on top in the West. A ninth division championship in ten years. Dodgers clinching on Spectrum Sportsnet LA. They were the 4 nothing win over the Arizona Diamondbacks. Second day of deliberations in Chicago at the singer R. Kelly's child sex abuse and pornography trial. He was sentenced in June to 30 years in prison in a separate federal trial in New York. I'm Chris Foster, Fox News. In one minute. WPTV's First Alert Weather on WSTU is brought to you by Sailfish Roofing, offering excellence, honesty, and integrity in everything they do. Sailfish Roofing, 772-263-ROOF, community roofing company you can trust. Sailfish Roofing. Now, here's WPTV's First Alert Meteorologist. Your WPTV First Alert forecast. This afternoon, highs in the upper 80s to low 90s with scattered showers and thunderstorms. Most of the rain fog clearing around sunset. Tonight, lows in the mid to upper 70s under partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow and Friday, a similar weather pattern. Highs in the upper 80s to low 90s with scattered afternoon to evening showers and storms. For the weekend, slightly drier air moves in and rain chances go down. Highs in the low 90s with some afternoon to evening showers and storms. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall for WSTU 1450 Martin County's Heritage Station. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jensen Beach, Hope Sound, Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Good morning and welcome back. We have another wonderful day here on the Treasure Coast and another Meet Your Candidate series in the studio for the first half of the show. Uh, show we're going to have Ray Denzel. He is running for Florida House of Representatives in District 86. But before we get to that, a couple updates that are happening in the county. And of course, I want to thank my sponsors, uh, COVID, unexpected expenses and illnesses. There are many issues that can cause your successful business to slump deep into the red. We are here to help and we only get paid if we provide you a workout. Debt restructuring is complicated. We are the negotiator between you and your creditors. Commercial Mortgage has been in the industry of small balance corporate finance since 2003. Our focus is on challenging corporate foreclosures, debt restructures, equity, and new debt solutions. These issues are often not easy to see or understand when you run a business and are faced with multifaceted debt challenges that include legal actions on various fronts. That's where we come in. We never charge a front fee or a deposit. We are only paid if we successfully provide you a debt workout. Areas of expertise include hotels, marinas, office buildings, restaurants, apartments, multifamily condos, golf courses, home builders, land development, including new and repurposed developments. So call Commercial Mortgage LLC today at 772-872-6099. Again, that's 872-6099. Visit them online at commercialmortgagellc.com. Also want to remind everybody we are in the midst of hurricane season now. The storms are uh, starting to get named. We actually had a wonderful August, but we never know. We're not out of the woods till the end of November. So uh, take it from personal experience. You want to get your hurricane reservations now. That way you have peace of mind if a storm is named, that you'll have a place to take your boat. The best place to do that is Indian Town Marina. It is one of South Florida's best boat storage facilities, and it's located inland, very, very very safe on the Okeechobee waterway. 
Very well protected. And while you're there, it's a do-it-yourself or full-service boatyard. You have best of both worlds. So if you need any work, bottom painting, mechanical work, electrical, you name it, uh, Indian Town Marina can help you out. Give them a call, 772-631-3272. Again, that's 631-3272. And again, at least get your reservation. Uh, you don't want to be left out and cold, basically, if a storm comes and no place to take your boat. And also, folks, I, I tell you... Every week, uh, one of the best places to visit and, and fun places here in Martin County is the Fish House Art Center. It's down in the pocket. They're doing some renovations, but they are absolutely still open. A lot of things to do for the entire family. There's boat charters, a marina, craft and creamery, uh, craft beers, wine, 24 flavors of ice cream, Airbnb. Uh, you can rent paddle boards. It's just a really fun place to take your friends, your family. And it's right down in the pocket in Port Salerno, thefishhouseartcenter.com. You can reach them at 221-5482. So uh, big updates yesterday. The uh, Rural Lifestyle Amendment was passed with a 3-2 to two vote. And wow, was that a commission meeting and a, a lot. A lot of a um, lot of comments on both sides of the fence on this this amendment, and uh, really the commissioners had all of them had excellent comments to be made. Very contentious vote, and you know it really was a tough vote, I think, for uh, a lot of the commissioners. So. We'll talk a little bit about that, Ray, because you okay. were at that meeting yesterday. Yes, I was. And also a, a personal update here on the, the puppy band. Uh, Commissioner Hetherington, a uh, big shout out to her. Uh, we have raised this issue. We've made it public, and uh, these two stores were not notified about the pet band. Uh, Wags About You has been especially vocal. They have zero violations, zero complaints, doing everything right. You can look on my Facebook page for some different videos about that. Commissioner Hetherington recognized this and said, we need to really talk about this moratorium on these existing stores so uh, she asked for that to be brought up at the next meeting which should be September 27th but in the studio let's talk with uh, Ray Denzo who's here to talk about his run again for Florida District 86 in the House of Representatives Ray's been married for 41 years has three children um, and I'm very sorry to say that Ray's uh, oldest child did pass away from COVID-19 yeah. in 2021 yes. and I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that Ray Thank you. Um, but uh, Ray's has three grandchildren five dogs and he says his family is everything to him he's originally from chicago and relocated to florida in 1988 where he established a career in sales and that continues to this day having met with many consumers over his career ray states it is these relationships that have given him an understanding of people's needs and desires ray denzel always has had an interest in politics for as long as he can remember and has always had a desire to serve in government now that his family has grown, Ray sees an opportunity to dedicate himself to run for office as Florida House Representative, District 86. Ray says, when I'm elected, I will dedicate myself to serving all people in my district, not only my party. The cliche that we are divided as a country has truth, and I wish for us all to be united again. So Ray Denzel, welcome to the studio. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Uh, Lana, I, first of all, always hats off to the candidates that are putting yourself out there to run for office. It's it's really... Uh, Thank you. It's it's a lot of work. Yes. It, yes. And a lot of things can come up uh, through you know media, through social media posts and whatnot that affect you and your family. It's really uh, a big decision, I think, and one that should be commended, and I do that. So I appreciate that. Tell us why you chose to run for District uh, House 86. Well, a long time ago, uh, I lived in Coral Springs and the uh, city council and the mayor and all that, it was kind of like a run amok. We were being embarrassed as a city, and it was one of those build-up things. I had to do something, and so I decided to run for mayor, which was uh, quite, quite an event. Um, makes what I do now easier, because uh, I've been through it. <clears throat> but um, I didn't win. But I, as I point out, I became more popular after losing that race uh, for mayor. Um, they would keep a seat for me at the council meetings, all right, signed autographs, uh, became president of the Democratic Club. Um, so it was a nice step off to something better and to be more helpful in the, in, the, um, in the city. Unfortunately, my kids were very little at the time and babysitting and coverage mm -hmm. and my wife and I worked different shifts. Um, it was almost impossible to continue to do it, so I had to back off at that at that time. Uh, push ahead to now, uh, where the kids are grown, married, you know, on their own. Um, it gave me a little more flexibility to do this. Um, my workload at, at my hours at work have lessened, so I'm more or less 
part-time over there so I had flexibility to do more and try to help out the city and the citizens of Stewart and Martin County um, and yes as you're saying it is time-consuming I have no free time because I'm either working or I got stuff around the house or it's the uh, the campaign uh, that I'm trying to work on and meet people and so on and I appreciate the opportunity today uh, to meet you and reach out to the voters. My pleasure, uh, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we bring you into the studio for and appreciate you coming so people can get a better idea of your platform while you're running. And I have a feeling that uh, when people watch this on Facebook and if you're not tuning in on WSTU, they might say, he looks kind of familiar to us. It's, it's Why is that? Why Where is, do you work? <laughs> yeah. Well, I work, at, I work at Home Depot and Stewart. I've been in the home improvement for... I came down as a transfer from Chicago. So I've been in the home improvement industry forever. For a long time, right? For a long time. And uh, once you're in a business, you're in a tight circle. Uh, as you probably know, with the, with the radio station, you meet people and it's like everybody knows everybody. And that's actually helped me along the way because I always come through and I never burn any bridges. So I'm always there. I am the, the neighbor on speed dial. All right. Uh, so they have a question that comes up. I've been doing this for a long time. I normally can help them. So let's talk about that, what you just said a little bit more. You're the neighbor that's always there to help. Uh, how do you see yourself if you're elected as that person that can reach across the aisle and work for both the, the D Democrats and the Republicans and independents? Yeah, the, I, being that I've followed politics for a long time, I remember where the center aisle was where people would work out their, their differences and so on. And it's a give and take type of deal. Nobody gets everything all the time, even though currently up in Tallahassee, it seems that one party has, has done that uh, for the last 20, 30 years. And so just because I'm on a Democratic ticket running as a Democrat, I don't vote totally the party line. I, I still look at what the best interest is for, for the people that I'm representing. And so my agenda is simply that to take care of them and do the best I can. And you can't win on everything, but definitely if you're trying, you will win enough. And a win should be good for everybody uh, in the long run. And so uh, I'll do the best I can. Um, I've been to a lot of meetings, I've been to protests and so on, and people are passionate on it. You have to listen to what's going on. And certainly that's that's true. You can't always, uh, sometimes you may want to vote for something that, um, or not vote for something either way, but sometimes you have to pick your pick your battle, so to speak. Correct. You have to look at the, for the greater good, all right? And you can't be, you can't be, um, have tunnel vision on something. You have to look at what, what works and what's going to benefit for the most. And that's part of people, I know there's, as you mentioned about, um, of people being strong one party or the other. Not everybody that's a Republican is bad. Not everybody that's a Democrat that's right. is good, right? There's a there's a mix everywhere, and you just try to work through that. And again, compromise, people don't like to hear that, but you get more done that way. If you dig your, dig your feet into what you want to do, you're not going to accomplish much. And, uh, you know, I will do the best I can on that. Ray, where can people reach you? Uh, yeah, you have a website as well. Yes. Uh, what's the best way for them to contact you to support you or ask you questions? Yeah. Um, my phone number and, and uh, email are on the website. It's raydunzel.org, and we'll take you there. Recently, we even had a uh, volunteer do a Spanish translation for the for the website. I saw that, which was which was amazing, um, and it's just to be a little more inclusive on it. But yeah, you can reach me there. It has my email on it, uh, Ray Dunzel number one at hotmail dot com, and my my cell phone is five six one five nine six eight six two two. So it's both there on the website, the cards that I hand out, and so I'm accessible. Uh, to anybody that needs help or has questions. As you're out on the campaign trail, what are the biggest issues you're hearing from constituents? Well, as I, as I hate to use the term whack-a-mole, there's been so many things that have gone on uh, in Tallahassee. Um, one of the women's rights, all right, that, that's been rolled back and um, it shouldn't have been. All right, there was a set in, it is a precedent and normally 
uh, Supreme Court net. They don't like to go in it. In this case, they made new precedent. Um, the don't say gay rights that was rolled out, again, being mean to a particular section of the population. Um, voter suppression. Uh, one of the things that got me into this race is that when um, they passed the bill, it put a $25,000 fine on each supervisor of elections if they were found doing something wrong, and that would come out of their own personal pocket. And I talked to supervisors in three three different counties, and it was I, you could see the pressure that they were under to make sure everything is perfect, and they do a great job. Um, but again, it wasn't unfair, and the voter suppression is to actually to stop people <clears throat> from voting, all right, or, as, or vote as little as possible, put as much roadblocks um, because of the um, success of vote by mail. A lot of people are older, can't get there, don't have transportation, uh, that type of stuff. Maybe they can't see well, so you can you can get things done that way, and the turnouts are better um, that. You can't always count it as a candidate on turnout the day of voting because midterms, uh, primaries, people are kind of reluctant to stop you know, and do it, which it only takes a few minutes if you show up at a, at a poll. Um, and those are those would be like the top top three that I'd be looking to do something on. I'm going to have Vicki Davis in here speaking of the supervisor yes. election. She's coming in it's either next week or the week after, and you know she has always done an amazing job yes, here in Martin County. I agree. So, yeah. uh, very very well run uh, supervisor she's, elections here. She's been very open. Yes, very open, and she's been very helpful. Uh, when I come in there, she's glad to do something, you know, to help whatever I need. Let me talk about a few issues that uh, have really come up this year, just in the last several months. If you were to be a representative, these are things that you would have to address as well and just get an idea where your position is. Uh, Florida has a new teacher certification pathway for veterans. And what that means is that uh, the Florida Department of Education is offering an opportunity for veterans to obtain a five-year temporary teaching certificate for qualified candidates who have not yet earned their bachelor's degree. They have to have a minimum of 48 months of military service with an honorable medical discharge, minimum of 60 college credits with a 2.5 GPA, passing score on the Florida subject area examination, employment in Florida school district, and the cleared background screening. What do you think about that? It's it's a stopgap. What what it's addressing the problem is that their teachers are leaving, or they're going somewhere else that it can be more right. appreciated. Um, it's too little, too late. It's also slapping the face of the teachers that have gone through, got all their accreditation put in the time, put in the studies. Uh, they're trying to make a career out of helping kids get to where they, sh they should be at the final end. And uh, nothing against the, the service, right? And my, I got friends, Marines, hoorah, all that stuff, right? Um, but just because the governor says, hey, we can, let's do this, doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Another huge issue right now I think all of us have seen in Florida is the Florida's property insurance market has been in turmoil as insurance, insurers have dropped customers and sought large rate increases because of financial losses. Ten property insurers have declared uh, insolvency <coughs> since April 2021, and thousands of policies a week have flooded into the state-backed Citizens Property Insurance Corporation, which was created as an insurer of last resort. Uh, meanwhile, uh, consumers have insurance costs that have tripled over the national average, rising from an average of $1,988 in 2019 to four thousand two hundred and thirty one dollars this year and on top of that uh, citizens is reviewing they have a, a cap of seven hundred thousand dollars if your home is worth over seven hundred thousand you lose your insurance there is no you know last resort insurer so this is something they're also struggling with right now Ray this is a real issue that uh, is impacting pretty much everybody a real issue and and I was one of the ones affected on it where you get a you get a call from your agent going okay you only have a month all right, and then you have to do things now. Having a newer home, anything, let's put it this way, since Andrew, this has been an issue, all right? And the uh, way it had been addressed, at first it seemed like it was a, a good thing that the state had done, uh, Miami-Dade, uh, all the requirements they do for code mm -hmm. and so on. That helped, but then the, um, the problem with getting quality insurance companies in because they, most of them had fled the state. State Farm almost went under. They were only kept uh, in business because of their car insurance. 
So this has been an ongoing thing, and it always gets shoved off to the side. Uh, we'll get to it later. We'll get to it later. The, the a lot of complaints with the rating agency that downgraded all those companies um, and basically forced them out of business with the state of Florida. That they were a rating agency, and they they knew this was coming. Uh, they're inexcusable. All right, and again, because some things are unpopular political politically, uh, like infrastructure, like roads, like bridges, right. um, it gets always pushed off to the side because people don't want to pay that. Right, right. And it, it is a very huge issue yeah. and complicated as well. Um, I know one of the things that uh, legislation did with their special session was they looked at some of the um, legal actions that have been taken where contractors can't be reimbursed for their legal expenses. It's, it's, a, it's one of the arrows in your quiver right yes but there's still a lot more work to be done yes um, and part of the problem with the insurance companies is reinsurance all the big companies go to somebody else to guarantee they actually ask for so much money ahead of time to cover uh, added expenses which are all getting a break so far this year fingers crossed uh, knock on wood uh, with no hurricanes getting close but it's also uh, wind damage it's also flooding um, now we've got uh, more saltwater encroachment coming in so um, all those things are you know part of the deal Ray our half hour is going so quickly Florida residences and businesses likely will get higher with hit with higher electric bills in 2023 as utilities continue to struggle with increased cost of natural gas uh, FPL, Duke Energy, Tampa Electric all filed petitions at the State Public Service Commission that detailed expected costs in 2023. And so they're looking at those proposals now, which would result in even higher uh, electric bills. Again, this is another issue that's going to be faced with our legislatures in the coming session. Right. Some of that was done because the um, FPNL is allowed to pass on costs to the consumers. So if they get hit, hit with taxes or so on, um, you end up paying no matter what, and they get off. They have the cushion built in, and that was signed by the governor a while ago. So there's, um, again, things that shouldn't have been done that's going to cost people. And if you want that tally of people coming in every day, um, moving to Florida, and everybody's happy and excited about that, we got to rein these things in to make it more affordable. Ray, I, I would be remiss to at least not speak about our water. That's, I think, the single biggest issue here in the in the area, uh, clean water. As a representative, what would you do to help ensure that we continue to yeah. work in the right direction? And, and Part clean of the problem the is, water. of course, Lake Okeechobee with all the phosphorus uh, fertilizer runoffs that go into it. And the lake level has to be kept under 13 feet. It's like 12 and a half right now. And if a hurricane comes where they have to dump water, that's 5,000 gallons per second that will go in the actuaries that are going to bring in the algae and the red tide and all this stuff that we've gone through. And if it, if it does happen, Stewart being a waterfront community, no matter where you live, it's going to affect everything. And it's going to cost money for jobs, um, infrastructure, boats coming through, all right, uh, people will go away because it's not livable. Do you believe in having some storage north of the lake? Yes, but it has to be done right. Um, and the, the problem is, is that, again, there are rules in place, but they're not enforced on taking care of what the farming industry does and the phosphates and so on and so forth. So a lot of things that are, are should be done are only, hey, we want you to look out, out for it, do it on your own. And most, most companies and so on, actually, you have to follow rules. That's when things get done. They do. And that's, that's one issue. I just have to say that um, it's not just the phosphorus and nitrogen and pollutants in the water. We have a brackish estuary, so releasing all that fresh water is yeah. in itself a pollution to a, a brackish estu estuary, and that's what kills the oysters and whatnot. So yes. the whole thing is, is and you know. And the smells and people going to the hospital, it's a real thing. It's not one of those things that happens somewhere else. This is in your own backyard. We only have two minutes. How do you feel about uh, home rule? Should Tallahassee be uh, legislating laws and regulations that impact what we want for home rule home rule each each community is different uh it's it's like if you're a chain and you order uh, snow blowers for florida it doesn't make sense all right so each one there has to be accountability to the state but each each city each county should have a say on what they're doing because they actually live there 
and it's the way to go. When you're up in Tallahassee, it's a long way. Everything looks distant, you, like you're looking through a telescope. And the, the figuratively and literally. literally. I wish, I wish yes. the capital was in Orlando. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, visit uh, org. Again, it's your website. We right. were only able to cover a few of the topics here, but you really have a lot of them listed here. Uh, you know, values you believe in, protect voters' rights, protect a woman's right to choose, protect LGBTQ rights, fight for universal health care, expand veterans' local health care and services outside of VA medical centers, mandatory universal background checks for gun purchases, and protect Florida's fragile and precious environment. We weren't able to cover all those topics but uh ray I, people can reach out to you and ask. absolutely that's that's the whole part of this going out meeting and greeting people can ask me and i basically i i can come up with anything that they want ray i appreciate you being in the studio Thank here you. today it gave us a little brief insight of who you are i wish you the best of luck on your run and Thank it's always so good to uh make sure everybody's voice is heard so i look look forward to working with you again absolutely Thank I, you. I again wish you luck raydenzel.org uh visit his website and i'm sure you'll see him around town Thank you. Very good. Up next, we're going to have Scott Watson in. We're going to be talking about Indian Town. We'll be back in just a minute.